So, upgrading video. Let's go. So, uh, where do I want to start? <laughs> Let's start with the basic. So, f f upgrading armor for towers is pretty straightforward. Upgrading anything for towers is pretty straightforward. Basically, you get something that has already decent tower stats on it. And then you just upgrade whatever stat you need. Like if you're going for an apprentice pet or whatever, just upgrade damage and rate. And then that's pretty much the same with anything else. Like armor, if you're doing apprentice build, you probably want damage and rate. If you're doing a monk build, you probably want range. If you want range wars, or if you want summoner with beefy minions, you probably want defense HP. It all just depends on what you're going for. And okay, so when you first pick up a piece of armor, you probably want to look at all the stats, see how good it is, and stuff like that. Like this one will cap tower damage pretty easily because it's supreme and supreme caps at 500. <laughs> it also can cap range or rate. And range can be pretty good. Rate. I don't know what you would cap rate for. Maybe on traps? Damage traps? I don't know. But I don't typically upgrade a stat into rate. I mean, same for accessories. Just upgrade it straight into what you need. And I'm going to go into open so I can do just that without spending any of my mana. Just to like test things out. So, if I'm doing an apprentice build, I just want to spam it all into damage. Okay, well, that one didn't quite make it that far. <laughs> See that one cap? Now I probably just want rate rate. That's all. For tower stuff. Now, DPS armor is a big difference in upgrading it. The more important things you want is resistances is top priority. If you don't have max resistance, you're taking a lot more damage than you need to. Like if you had Let's say you have Let's say you have like eighty percent resistance on your armor. You're taking double the damage you're taking as if you if like in in comparison to ninety percent resistances, you're taking double damage. <laughs> That's how big differences if you're not maxed. So how do you get max resistances? Well, if you you want to cap the first one first and you want to use the shift key for this because the shift key automatically stops at the 10th upgrade. So as soon as you're at the 10th upgrade you can notice you can upgrade these again. It's like hold shift it all goes straight to that upgrade. Now once you're and you and you want to do the first one first so you can don't miss the tenth upgrade. It's kind of important. Um 
Now this base is probably more suited for probably the AB2. So I'm just going to upgrade it to AB2. Still holding shift. I think it's 29 you want to stop at. 29. If you have 29 resistance on all your armor pieces, it'll give you 90%. Probably be more convenient if I was using a mouse <laughs> Now these percentages are a little bit different from mythical to divine and void. I think in divine and void you only want 28%. And mythic, you want more? I don't know. Usually, you don't end up capping resistances on mythics because they don't really go that high. And then the remaining points, I'll just dump it to AB2. That's a upgrade armor. Pets, all the pets are different. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, in general, should I do a general DPS pet first? Uh, okay, let's do this one first. Okay, the eyeball. Eyeball, you just want to max projectile speed, attack speed bonus, and base damage. So every couple upgrades, you can upgrade the attack speed bonus. I think it does up to just seven. Yeah, okay, so now I can just spam the rest, holding control. And that's a fully upgraded eye. It's actually not that bad. <laughs> Other pets might have multiple projectiles. You just want to pretty much cap the whole row, the whole top row. Because you want projectiles speed bonus, additional projectiles, all this at max. You want all this at max. The projectile speed bonus usually translate to accuracy. Because it just, yeah. <laughs> and then, okay, now, s situational pets, like, this one, that, uh, the imp heals nearby defenses. You don't really need to upgrade a defense heal amount. Because the more you do that, the more mana it drains you. As you can see, it heals your number of defenses and drains your mana. So the more you add to that, it'll just drain more and more of your mana. Faster. And you don't really need to heal a lot more than what it's already at. So I would just pick a stat, upgrade it, get the heal speed amount all the way up, and that's all you really need. And you can just throw the rest into whatever stat you want. Whatever you need. Like, mostly, on a pet like this, you probably want hero HP, which it doesn't have on this one, but... <laughs> just to keep your imp holder alive longer. Genies. Now, this genie has a really high mana collection bonus already. If it's at, like, 25k or higher, I wouldn't really worry about upgrading that. If this is a tower boost genie, you would upgrade the EB1, which is it here. If this is a Jester Genie, which this one is, you probably want AB2 or Castrate for that upgrading speed. Now I can cap Castrate and cap AB2 on this. So next best thing is, I don't know, pick one damage or HP. <laughs> Cats. Cats are tricky. Cats are tricky because it's very unclear as to what these do. Additional projectiles is actually how many more defenses it boosts. The reload speed bonus is actually the range it affects people. How many people it boosts. 
and that clip ammo is actually how, by how much it boosts. And you can upgrade it, all of these as well, every three... Okay, you can upgrade that one on the second upgrade. And then two more... Yeah, every... After, after every two upgrade, you can upgrade it again. And I think every 20 upgrades... No? When can you upgrade this? Oh, 30 upgrades? Every 30 upgrades you can upgrade that. Okay. So you... Upgrading cats is a chore, because <laughs> there's no shortcuts. You just have to click one at a time. <laughs> And you can do that. I'll just do it this way. There. That's, that's as good as that cat's gonna get. Guardians. Did I have two guardians? I was gonna show something else with them. Oh, there's two. Okay. Okay, the guardians, their defense damage boost or defense rate range resistance doesn't matter past 40. If you have 40 or above, that's max. It won't add anything. If I take this one. And I'll prove it. So that one has 331 damage. Let's just kind of make this one the same. There you go. Okay, now we have the same damage. Right. Give it to my apprentice. That's a boosted tower. That's 58, 4, 8, 9. Now, if I swap out my pet, there's no difference. And this one's at 78 boost, and the other one's at 49. There's no difference at all. <laughs> I had to make the damage the same just so it was fair. <laughs> fair comparison. Oh, yeah, and to upgrade them. Basically, you want... I don't know, what I think on Guardians, the base, the best stats for Guardians is Hero HP and AB2. AB2 because it increases your summoner's heal. And you can hold shift again for this one, because it's every 10 upgrade you can upgrade that. And then after that, I don't know, I just want to cap hero boost, hero damage for the sake of it. And then cast rate is probably the next important. And that's already capped. As soon as you're, f you just need a guardian with 40 upgrades. 40 boost. It's a perfect guardian. <laughs> Stats don't matter so much, but I like having HP and maybe two. What else? Accessories. Talked a little bit about accessories. Mm. Or, well. Okay, this is a DPS accessory. Typically, you don't want to upgrade accessories because they cost a lot of mana. At least, not right away. This is honestly a better Jester accessory for high cast right here. So I'll just. So I'm at 219 billion mana here. If I. Control click. I'm at 201. That took like 18 billion mana. That's quite a lot for one item. Well, 
weapons. Uh, like a staff? You, of course you basically want to look at your stats, make sure it's good for whatever you want to use it for. In this case, this is a pretty good hybrid staff, because it has both a bunch of hero stats and the two tower stats you want on your apprentice. That's what I'm seeing. <laughs> so if I was to upgrade this for DPS, I would max out projectile speed, additional projectiles, charge speed is... I don't know, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. I like to have it at 70... 70 something. Knockback doesn't really matter. Again, that's just your preference. And I know there's some staffs that like to have elemental damage instead of base damage, but I'm just gonna... basically you just... it depends on the staff and I forget what scales with hero damage or not, but I'm just gonna go base damage on this one in particular, I think. That could be an elemental staff, and I just did it wrong, but... <laughs> see, this one, you would do the same thing. This one won't be an elemental staff, this one's base damage staff. Other weapons... Let's switch here for this. <laughs> okay, so this is a monk weapon, it has range and close combat. Um, the Grim Reapers are unique in that they siphon life from enemies. And they're good for pretty much either one of these, the close range or the ranged. But I like being ranged monk, so I typically just go for range. You pretty much just want to max projectile speed, range damage, and additional pro well, and protection. additional projectiles then ranged. I don't think poison damage does anything. No. If you do range attack, poison damage doesn't count, so that's only close range. Swords. If you want resistance, you can cap that, or if it's already capped, just straighten damage. <laughs> Pretty simple. Guns. Uh, this gun in particular is actually good for towers, so I would just upgrade it straight into a tower stat, which will probably be damage because it's the highest stat there. You don't want to upgrade negatives. Never upgrade negatives because you want to make the weapon better for its best stats, not for its worst. <laughs> and this one has a slow projectile speed. <laughs> So I probably won't be using it for DPS, because that'll take a lot of upgrades to take that all the way up. Over 50, even. So I just want to cap that. And probably range. But if you were doing DPS, I would just do shots per second and, and projectile speed and damage again. You don't really need clip ammo, because a lot of weapons in late game have already a lot of clip ammo. <laughs> Now, weapons like this have elemental weapon scaling, it says so in the middle there. So you can actually upgrade this into lightning damage, because if you do ranged attacks with this, you'll see it does lightning damage there. Typically, if you upgrade lightning damage, it'll upgrade to a bigger number than ranged damage, if they were equal. Even as little as uh, range damage has above lightning damage here, lightning damage will probably be more anyway. If that makes sense. <laughs> so I would just upgrade 
lightning damage, projectile speed, additional projectiles, and now it does a bunch more lightning damage. I think that's it for my guide on upgrading. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> this is on YouTube, so this will be my first time asking for likes and please subscribe. And hello, cheesesteaks! Welcome to the den. 